Grandpa Max sits the family down. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin. And he tells him about his past as a plumber. Ben and Kevin's eyes are wide open as he recounts his tales. But Gwen is a bit disappointed that he never told them anytime sooner. And of course, Kevin is super invested into this story for a completely different reason. The sound of sirens alerts the team. And of course, Ben and Kevin are up and ready to take on whatever is afoot in the name of the plumber. But before Grandpa Max could even stop them, they both jet off and they summon the Janet to wherever those ambulances are going. They arrive and see a tiny havoc beast. Ben, Kevin and Janet make quick work of it, but they are suddenly pounced on by a plumber. Janet comes under fire, but she manages to dodge the shots. Ben takes cover and the lights end up going out. Both sides are in complete darkness, but Kevin sneaks up behind and pounces and delivers a shock to his system, knocking out the rogue plumber agent. A few moments later, the agent comes to without his mask when he's greeted by Grandpa Max. He's elated to see his old partner Max and Grandpa Max is also happy to see Phil. He explains that he got trashed by some punk kid and a kinocellaran but when he looks closely at Ben's wrist he realizes that he's wearing the chaki tricks. He advances and tells them to come back to his place and they do. As Ben and Gwen and Kevin stuff their faces with food, Grandpa Max takes notice of how nice Phil's place is. Phil tells him that it's one of the perks of the job. And Grandpa Max really starts to look around as the kids begin to lament how nice this place is. But for some reason, Phil starts to get scared. He ducks behind his sofa pulling out a null void gun and tries to shoot at Grandpa Max. But Kevin manages to push him out of the way. Lucky girl in the same breath tackles Phil and the beam ricochets hitting on one of the mirrors and recasting onto Phil, sending him into the null void. Yes, she's that lucky. Grandpa Max says that it looks like that's how Phil got the aliens loose. But the poor guy, he seems like he was scared of. And then he glances over to the kids, chuckles to himself and realizes what a formidable team he has with him. Ben says to Grandpa Max that he has nothing to worry about and that he can count on them. But what was that beam thing? Grandpa Max decides to sit them down and tell them a story about an alternate dimension. The team head out into the woods to enjoy the outdoors. But of course, the day is never yet that simple, as the trio would rather have fast food than whatever the hell Grandpa Max is about to start cooking up. They begin tampering with the watch, which ends up unlocking a brand new alien, Cannonbolt, or Lizzo as she calls herself. However cool that is, a grand threat lands with this new alien arrival, a giant planet sucking being along with its worshippers claiming that it is here to cleanse the world. They tell Ben and the family to rejoice as it will be the end of the world. But the team aren't having that and they gear up as quickly as possible in order to fight off the alien trio along with the tick. Cannonbolt attacks first, barreling in, but she gets knocked away into the forest. Lucky Girl and Kevin take down the big fellow, leaving both Ben and Grandpa Max on the other two. A shootout begins, but the tick decides to third party and take them down into the ground. They get overwhelmed by its intervention, but Gwen manages to avoid it and escapes lunging into the forest where she gets in contact with Cannonbolt who hasn't timed out as yet. She explains that she had flashbacks of her world being torn apart by that thing. Even though she has only just now been born, she knows to fear it. However, Gwen encourages her. Even though she was scared in the first moments, she tried to fight and she must try again. But this time, she won't be alone. As the rest of the crew sink, we see Cannonbolt barreling towards the tick dodging laser fire and making quick work of that one axe guy. She cannons up into the air when we realizes that she has the lucky charm attached to her and she hurdles downward onto the tick getting right into the cracks and crevices, tearing it up from the inside, saving the team and sending the worshippers on their way. Ben spends the day fantasizing about becoming a superhero. However, his fantasy gets interrupted by Gwen and Kevin berating him as a nerd. However, a giant ship lands on Earth with Volcanus only, as his search for a mysterious power source begins. Then Gwen and Kevin gear up to get into action, but they're actually beaten to the punch by the Galactic Enforcers, who have already taken down Volcanus and tied him up. Ben hasn't summoned any aliens, the heroes just wink at them and teleport away. The team, however, continue their road trip as Ben is struggling with a horrendous foot fungus. Where they meet up on a kid who escaped from a nearby campsite. The team end up being so concerned by the distraught young man, so they all end up going to the camp, where they meet up on a pair of twins. However, the entire campsite 
is empty, besides these very interesting shadowy figures that are stalking them. Grandpa Max hears a funky noise, but before he goes outside, he gives Ben something for his athlete's foot, and then he goes to investigate. Ben applies it to his shoe in a large dose to get some form of ease. But Grandpa Max ends up getting captured, and the team notice how long it's taking him to come back. So Kevin and Ben go out to investigate along with Wildmoot to assist with tracking, while Gwen stays with the kids. However, in the forest, as they start to get closer, they get jumped and beaten up and taken to the lair of the mycelium. Upon waking up, Kevin is scared out of his mind as Ben is completely unconscious. Grandpa Max says that they don't need to worry about it, they'll figure out a way to get out of there. However, they end up being brought to the lair of the giant plant. Now, they all just stare at each other as Ben hangs limp. You see, since there's no wild vine, we can't understand what the big fungi is saying. However, Ben's shoe falls off and the powder falls into the plant's mouth and it starts to gag killing it. However, Grandpa Max and Kevin take notice of this, that this fungus powder is the mycelium's weakness, and they proceed to kill the rest of the fungi around this powder. The search for the ultimate weapon happens pretty much the same exact way, but the sword turns into dust. The team then ends up going to a festival, where Gwen gets in contact with one of the charms of Bazel. However, it is being hunted by Charmcaster and Hex, who has been freely released from prison. Now Gwen, already having the lucky charm, ends up equipping this extra charm as well, and now we can safely say that she isn't someone to be trifled with. They get jumped by Hex and Charmcaster, however the trio is way too strong for them, and beat them to a pulp, sending them to jail. Plot 4, They Lurk Below, happens pretty much the same way as it did in the show. They are able to save their family members and return the purple alien power source. However, Gwen's mini orientation is afoot, but Ben is having some dreadful nightmares where Ghost Freak makes her presence known. And of course, once the family of four goes to the school, even in the orientation, Ben sees Z everywhere, and then he ends up encountering the Circus Freaks. He tries to summon another alien, but only gets the Ghost Freak icon. So he ends up summoning her unintentionally. She slaughters the circus freak, beating them nearly to death. They run for their lives and she chases them. As she is about to time out because of the distance from the Chakatrix, she manages to escape the watch. Ben gives chase and notices that she escaped and tries to confront her, telling her that she must return to the watch. However, she does not. Trying to attack Ben, failing because of daylight, she escapes into the shadows. Ben tells his family that she has escaped, and on the other end, she manages to secretly team up with the circus freaks. All end up meeting for a nighttime battle on the school grounds, where Tara the Strong, Lucky Girl, Kevin, and Grandpa Max are there, about to take them on. They beat the circus freaks to a pulp and send Ghost Freak running. However, Ben gives chase in rage being baited into fighting her in a one-on-one. -on -one. However, he gets the upper hand with the sun gun that he carried with him and is able to finish off Ghost Freak. Now of course, with the nature of the Chucky Tricks and Grey Matter's warnings, Ben doesn't tamper with the watch, with fear of harming the aliens, so Dr. Animo never has the mutant ray and he gets dealt with pretty easily. And with the fact that there is no Kevin in space, Vilgax is not unfrozen. Not for now at least. Now, based on the trajectory of this story, Team Tennyson aren't abducted by future Gwen since the timeline doesn't end up neglecting Grandpa Max. They however do end up going to the mall where they walk by a lame hypnotist they leave without ever participating and his raid on the mall fails since Ben isn't there to steal the necessary pieces for his plan. The crew do pass through Salem though, pouring some American history and culture when a fire breaks loose. Ben summons Stinkfly to put it out, while Lucky Girl and Kevin locate other sources of water in order to quell the flames. Charmcaster uses this as her opportunity to try and jump Ben and capture him and switch bodies as swiftly as possible. However, the time it takes for the spell to cast is too long and she starts to get anxious as both Lucky Girl and Kevin close in. And before she can even switch bodies, she gets neutralized and sent to jail. The events of the Christmas special happen pretty much the same. However, Ben Wolf plays out completely differently, as the Yuno Doshi does not engage in combat with Ben once he had noticed that it was him, as ordered by Dr. Victor because Ben and the Team Tennyson are becoming too strong. 
and they all reconstruct their plans for world domination. However, they would need to get Ben Tennyson and or Gwen Tennyson out of the picture. After seeing the hero body ads, the team end up going to the park, where the signing of these characters are taking place. However, a storm erupts on arrival, forcing them to stay inside. A normal progression of what happened in the Game Over episode takes place, where Ben and Kevin end up arguing and getting trapped in the game. And this is where we begin a very important moment, the Game Over incident. Gwen and Grandpa Max are both napping during this entire thing, and the rain begins to subside. However, a new storm has emerged, as the rust bucket is surrounded by villains, Zambozo, Rojo, Hex, Charmcaster, the Circus Freaks, and the two unnerved creatures, the Yenoldoshi and the fearsome Dr. Victor. They state that they are here to end Team Tennyson as they have grown too powerful, calling themselves the Negative Ten. Gwen remarks that there are only nine of them, but they laugh as they know that number ten is already doing their point in this mission. We flip back to inside the game where Ben and Kevin are having a blast, taking on various bots that were made by Kenko. However, the stakes rise high after they meet upon Ishiyama, who takes down Ben and Kevin, leaving them down to a singular life. Duo try to explain to him that they mean well and that they are trying to defeat Kenko as well. However, the Ghost Freak icon pops up in the middle of their conversation and Ben grabs it immediately. It would have been his first transformation since Upgrade with this empty Omnitrix. But he ends up summoning forth Ghost Freak, freeing the vile and evils of Scare, plunging the game itself into darkness. This locks the Chakitrix transformation and now we are stuck at a complete crossroads. The Scare is finally free. Both teams are now in a state of problems. Kevin and Ben need to get out of the game and Gwen and Grandpa Max need to go to Mount Rushmore for protection. Kevin and Ben make remarkable progress, convincing Ishiyama and finally making their way to the upgrade icon, with Gwen and Grandpa Max trying to make their way to Mount Rushmore against all odds. Upon arrival, they are about to leave the rust bucket but Gwen halts and wonders where is Ben and Kevin. However, they both leap out of the GameCube and telling the rest of them that they need to run immediately as they are followed by a free Zeskare and Kenko. Ben summons Janet immediately and she jets the team out of the rust bucket, saving them and bringing them inside of Mount Rushmore. They head inside and begin their preparations for the incoming threat as Zeskare begins to converse with a negative 10. Team Tennyson gears up and a negative 10 come bursting in. However, our team is ready for them and the battle begins. The fight rages as each side trades strong blows with Tara the Strong taking multiple down at a time. As Ben goes blasting away, he is swooped right through a wall by the scare and the two start a battle, trading blows, sun blasts for ghastly rays. But it all comes down to this. Ben and Zaskare face each other down, the next blast should be the one that takes down the other. Zaskare makes a wager for Ben to give up his body and that they could rule the world. He could have everything on earth, a thought for Ben that never occurred. But Ben says if you beat me here I guess the world's an easy win. But you damn ugly ghastly bitch, I'm the best that's ever been. But she dodges and tries to pounce on him. But Ben says you son of a bitch, I'm the best that's ever been. And the mirror behind her amplifies the beam, vaporizing her in an instant. The scare turns to dust. Ben walks out to see the rest of the negative 10 has been taken down. And then he chuckles. No one beats the Tennysons. And Kevin. So, if you've made it to the end of this video, thanks for watching. And if you would like to see Chakatrix Alien Force, get this video to 5,000 likes and we'll make it happen.